So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology. Happy New Year and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about should you buy the iPhone 13 in 2023. Now why am I starting the year with this phone that you've covered a few times already? It's because in my awards video I talked about how, or am I actually, I think it was my loser phone videos. I talked about how the 14 is a good phone, but the 13 is so similar. So I wanna kind of revisit, are we going to be recommending a 13 model here in 2023? Because we are only nine months away from a potential A17 chipset, potentially bringing Dynamic Island down to the base, you know, regular iPhone, you know, 14 models and, bringing them over to the 15, we're probably gonna see Dynamic Island on the 15 and the 15 plus. So is this gonna be worth it? Well, let's begin by talking about the body and the build. In terms of the looks and the design, yes, I do think it's still a go. Uh, reason why is because they kept the squared edges, this look on the 14, and knowing Apple, they're probably gonna keep it again and go with a Dynamic Island. If not, they're gonna slightly curve the edges a little bit more, take it back to you know a little bit more curved action. But I don't think we're gonna see a massive change this year just on the base models. The pro models, of course, but the base models, I think it's gonna look similar. So this phone right here, still a win in 2023 on that front. In terms of the actual feel, I can say that these iPhones are starting to get a little bit stale just due to the fact that Apple did launch the iPhone 12 with a similar design. And then they have the iPhone 14 now, the iPhone 13. There's just, there's like too many of these options with the squared edges, so it doesn't feel very premium anymore. It doesn't feel very like over the top. It just feels like, oh, it's another iPhone these days. So yeah, the design is fine. It's just not groundbreaking anymore, but for a lot of people who've never had an iPhone, I just dropped the case, for a lot of people who don't have another iPhone, this is still gonna be a win for them. Moving on to the actual display of the phone, we are looking at OLED panel here, so this is still very good, very bright. And honestly, there's some phones that on the Android side that still don't get as bright as something like the iPhone 13. So if you are looking for just a little bit more brightness, iPhones usually do give you that. Now Samsung is offering up extra brightness modes on their newer phones, so those are pretty good as well. But I will say that the Galaxy S22, that one, pretty good, but the iPhone 13 has plenty of brightness. It definitely does. Gets around 800 nits. Outdoors is pretty decent as well, so not a big issue there. The actual screen quality, Apple has kept this retina style screen around for a super long time, just very sharp. Um, it's not the sharpest out there. You can get 4K displays on things like Sony phones. You can also get 2K displays on Android competitors. So it's not the sharpest panel out there, but Apple does really tune it well. There's very accurate colors across the board on these base, even these base iPhones. And one thing I don't like in 2023 is that this phone costs seven, 800 bucks, and this phone has a 60 hertz panel. That's pretty lame, especially considering Samsung's bringing $350 phones with 120 hertz panels. I'm talking about the A-line. This is kind of ridiculous at this price point. Apple, if you're watching this video, come on guys. 90 hertz or 120 hertz, even on these models, unless you're gonna drop the price on these things, it's pretty lame. But most people don't seem to care as they still sell a ton of them, but I'm talking from a tech techie perspective, you know, I want a little bit more for seven, 800 bucks. And that's what I wanna talk about here is the price. You can get this phone for around 699 at Apple, but if you do look third party, you're gonna be able to snag one of these for five or 600 bucks. That is a good $300 savings over the nearly the same iPhone 14. So if you're looking for a deal, look third party, you should be able to find a solid option deal on here. Now, I wanna switch gears a little bit. We were talking about display and stuff like that. Yeah, the notch is there, no dynamic island, but that is the better looking notch, not the wider one from the older phones. The software on board is gonna be one of the reasons why we buy any iPhones is because we continuously get software updates, including new features like the Freeform that just launched not too long ago. And we will be getting the upcoming iOS 17 this year, so do stay tuned for that. We will be covering that here on the channel in 2023, but just continuously getting features year after year after year makes it a good option. The And the iPhone 13 being from 2021, we're not talking about this like this is an old phone. You're still gonna have this thing if you buy it for a good four years 
and be solid. So software is great. One of the reasons why I even want to cover this again is because Apple decided to keep the A15 chipset on the iPhone 14. And so one of the reasons is because they were having heating issues with trying to make the A16 so much faster. So they basically use an architecture design that really kind of resembles something very similar to the A15. So if you do buy an iPhone 13, 13 Pro Max, 14, 14 Plus, you're essentially getting nearly identical performance to the newest pros. Yes, they're a little bit better, a little bit better with heat management and stuff like that, but these don't really get too hot either. And they can run basically everything on the planet. As a matter of fact, I do, I have seen rumors that Apple's gonna be focusing more on battery life efficiency, as well as other improvements versus just performance, because we've been saying it time and time again, these phones have gotten so fast that you really don't think about performance anymore. And the iPhone 13 is one area. However, if you do stack this side by side with an 120 years promotion panel, you'll think it looks smoother, but once you stop looking at it, you probably won't care too much anymore because basically everything else runs just fine for the iPhone 13, which is saying a lot. I mean, you can, you can snag one of these several hundred dollars cheaper in 23 versus a 14 and get again 95% of that phone. Updates should be coming for a long time. Performance rock solid as you can see right here. Now moving on the storage, you do have quite a few options, but they do top out at 512 gigs for this one. So you can't go all the way up to a you know one terabyte option. The good thing though, is that the iPhone 13 does launch with a 128 gig storage. Unlike the 12, which launched at 64, that's just too tiny in 2000 and 23 so i think this is a good option if you want a good amount of storage on your phone that's not bad but again you're going to pay more if you want to go all the way up to that 512 gig option then i want to talk about one other thing with this phone the battery life this is something that was actually super good on the iphone 13 and one of the reasons why i think this is a good recommendation to start the year if you are looking for an iphone and you want a deal as long as the person didn't drain the battery, you're looking for this third party, maybe renew it, something like that. It has high maximum capacity. This thing lasts all day. It doesn't have the largest brightness, but that contributes to a better battery life in the real world. So that's pretty good on that front. Also, you can enable low power mode. And what I like about the low power mode here on the 13s is that because they don't have, this one doesn't have the 120 Hertz, you're already in 60 hertz. Whereas with the pros, the low power mode drops it down and then you get a worse experience because you're used to the promotion, not here. So you can actually take advantage of that low power mode and get really great battery life on this phone. It just doesn't really drain too often. And I really like that about this one. I think a lot of people will as well. Even the 13 mini, if you wanted to get a 13, the smaller version, that one also can get through a day. So pretty good there. I will say Face ID hasn't changed at all over the years, so this is not a big deal. Yes, it's more accurate than maybe the initial iPhone 10, but nothing much has changed. The 6.1 inch size is also quite good, but even if you have big hands, this is a good size, but if you have small hands, it's gonna feel a little bit big, I think for a lot of people. This comes in Starlight Midnight, as well as Blue Pink Red, and this green, which was an optional color, um, at one point, you know, middle of the year. So definitely I picked this one up. I got rid of my blue one that I used to cover back on the, the channel. And that's a good option as well. I will say speaker phone performance is pretty good as well as audio performance, pretty good on the bottom and the top. This just, just don't get as loud as the pros though. So if you're looking for the loudest speakers in the world, this phone is not it, but it does sound pretty darn good. It's something to mention. I do like the 174 grams of weight on here. It makes this iPhone 13 feel like uh, pretty easy to manage day to day, a lot easier to manage than that weightier pro model that you would get with the iPhone 13 Pro, which came in a Sierra blue, very beautiful color, but also much heavier feeling. So if you're looking for this thing, it's gonna feel more like a brick in your pocket versus the iPhone 13. So do keep that in mind. And last thing I'm gonna cover and I'm gonna show you before we head out is the camera. It's an area of the phone that really does shine for the iPhone 13. And one of the reasons why people upgrade phones a lot is the camera performance. It needs to be really good. And the iPhone 13 is stellar. It has an amazing ultra wide, an amazing regular angle. And what I really like about the iPhones is that they take really good photos with the 
AI, you know, that they're doing in here. And you don't really have to know anything about photography and your photos will look better than some photographers who don't know what they're doing. Cinematic mode, slow motion, time lapse. You could start a whole YouTube channel on this phone. That's how good the camera is. Might even be better than my video quality right now. I'm not sure. Um, usually it's not because I can tweak my own settings on my camera, but even on the front facing camera, it's also pretty good. So I do like recommending this phone for camera if you don't need zoom. A lot of people in the real world only need to snap a photo. They don't really need to zoom that far. You can zoom in quite a bit. And when you're close, things look fine, but the digital zoom really shows some noise at the higher zoom. So that's just really the letdown here. At this price, you can get much more zoom, but you're not gonna get the long software updates on some other phones in this price category. And you're not gonna get you know, all the iOS benefits. So do keep that in mind. So take a look at some of my samples here to end this video here. You can kind of decide if the 13 is for you. All right, guys, so that's gonna wrap it up. What'd you guys think of the photos? What do you think of the 13 here in 2023? This is a phone that, you know, is gonna be, I think, still a good seller here throughout this year, just because it represents more value now, getting a lower price point, having most of the modern stuff and being found for several hundred less than the 14 and the 14 Pro. Not at the Apple store, it's only like 100 or something, but when you look third party, you should be able to get this well under that. So let me know your thoughts on it. Do you have one? Are you picking one up? Subscribe if you haven't already. Thumbs up. I got many more contents coming your way throughout the year. Thank you very much for all your support. Have a happy new year. Enjoy your day. I'll catch you on the next one. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace.